You gotta understand that what we're doing right now is we're living out time. We're living out time. Time is happening right now. Time has already happened. Time has happened. But we're living through time right now. So watch. I'm gonna tie this together for you. This is this is out of prop, uh, out of song. This is honor the Lord, you heavenly beings. Honor the Lord for his glory and strength. He's talking to angels. Honor the Lord for the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord echoes above the sea. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty sea. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord splits the mighty cedars and the Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. Listen, old angel. Watch what the Father is doing. They're in business right now. The angels are our helpers. Angels come to help us. Angels are deliverers of messages. Angels are real. We may entertain angels that we don't know about. The Bible talks about it a lot. So be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you talk. He says, oh, heavenly beings, watch what's going on here. Worship God, know God, but watch. Watch what he has planned. You guys ready? Are mm -hmm. you believers, man? Come on, please. Please quit whining, quit crying. Quit worrying. Just cut it out, man, because you're not like them. You're not like the world anymore. That's the hardest thing you got to figure out is that you're not like them anymore. What you like does is not what you used to like, how you act is not how you used to act. What changes your mind works your mind is not what it used to be. What now happens now is that you have a new desire, a new priority. And a lot of the stuff that we normally do goes against it. So we have this conflict, conflict of interest. Conflict of heart. So God changes it, starts working on us so that it fits. This is out of first Peter, guys. For the first timers, what we got here is stuff that is underlined, that is italicized, and is bolded. Yeah. Those are your words, the rest of my words are completely confused and around. Three o'clock this afternoon, I'll square past noon. <laughs> so about nine o'clock tonight, I'll call you. No. You call me. No. Let's go and hear what the word of God has to say. Church. All praise to God. Say it again. All praise to God. All praise to God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have. Is anybody born again? Is anybody not who they were? Unless you cry for joy. And you cry for the joy of God. Because there's no sadness. Somebody passes away and you're going with God. You lose the job, got one coming up better. When? When? We keep asking when, but God says, just a minute. Let me show up and show up. And he always does. We say, God! And he says, what? Watch. All praise God the Father of Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that us, we, everybody sitting here, if you've asked God to come into your life, you are born again. Because God Jesus. Is, there any, is there any, 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 are you sure who he's talking about? This is not, 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 this is not no, Jesus from the 37th Street. Down there, there's a little bit of a no, Jesus, no, this is a different one. This is, this is Jesus Christ. This is the Messiah, the Lord Jesus. And that's, that's LGC, man. That's a little, well, the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no doubt on who's talking about the Son of God. The one that crucified, the one that walked out of the tomb, the one that, if you are here, have given your life to, the one that sits on the throne next to the Father that is just waiting. Because God raised Jesus, okay, hold on. Uh, it is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God, church, 
uh, 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 all the, the decay and all the garbage would rise up. What do they call that? Scum. And the Bible the translation is scum. All your ego, all your pride, all your thinking that gets in the way, God calls scum. So we got into a place where we say, I quit. I give up. You're in charge now, God. God steps back and goes, thank you. Finally, finally, I can start working in you and start showing you who I am in a way that you'll understand me. Now, I do this and this because these two young ladies are right in the middle of, of getting to know God for the very first time. To explore God in a brand new way where God is relevant and real. Uh, and now we're trying to help you carry all this wonderful information and help you make sense of it. That's the cool part. And by hearing this now, it's like you understand it a little bit better. You've heard this before, so what I'm hearing you say is that when we're going through these circumstances, that God's going to use these circumstances to teach us and to guide us. And when we, when we do something wrong, he doesn't condemn us, he just corrects us. These trials are to show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Um, through your faith, it is... It, through your faith, though your faith is far more precious than Jehovah. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you. Say it again. Will it bring will bring you. It might not might bring you, it may be kind of you know, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is. When is that? That's the day of judgment, man. That's when everybody's going to know that every knee will bow, that every voice will proclaim to God. You will go to the right. And you'll click, 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 click. You go in there one at a time. And you're going to go in there and they're going to say, who are you? I'm just kidding because they really know. <laughs> Why is the, the, the path to righteousness so narrow? We go one at a time. It's personal. Over here, it's all one bunch of sinners. They all go together. They don't matter. You're all grouped together. Group B. The Bible says the world narrow because we're going one at a time and we're accountable for ourselves. Next! Though your faith is far more precious than your goal, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it brings you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. This is when God says, here's my boy Tracy, I hold him up, and he is my evidence, my trophy, we speak in Ephesians. How you like me now? Well, let me see, let me see who Tracy is. This is his life. Oh, he was doing this, yeah, I remember when he was cooking meth, yeah, like, wait, what happened? He got in prison, yeah, go, found Jesus. Got out of prison. Oh, don't say it, don't say it, sober project. No! <laughs> Chase has been a minister for the last nine years. Amen. Amen. God's good to say it sucks, man. That's all there is to it, man. Give up, man. Give in. Let God do it. So, Tracy, how long have you really been working out and thinking about being a pastor? <laughs> a minister? Like, since you were young, I've always wanted to be a minister, no. This is not, kids don't want to be junkies or preachers. <laughs> we both became, we became both. We became both. <laughs> but God does what he does, so he can do what he does. So we can get saved and get some, man. He just wants us to have it, to know it, to share it. Make it real, make it obvious, make it painful. Verse 8 says, you love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious inexpressible joy. Unexpressible joy. You got some of that? You got some of that? I walked in, you walked in, I go, what's that all over your face? You go, what? Go, That's a smile. Got scared. Oh Undeniable, unexpressed. God is good and starting to work. And we forget, we've been doing this too long, we forget. But then we lift our heads and we remember. 
we rejoice that God's taking another one of us, cleaning us up, giving us back to the Father. We get to go to heaven. Why the hell are you crying? <laughs> you must love him though you have never seen him, though you do not see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice with glorious, unexpressible joy. The reward of trusting Amen. will be the salvation of your soul. Your soul. Just soul love. And then whoever you influence in your path. You get to help people get to go to heaven now. You do. By your testimony. This is who I was. This is when Jesus came into my life. This is who I am now. Praise God. Because God's got something. We want you to belong to us. We want you to stick around. I told you, sweetheart, give me some time. Give me, give me six weeks. Give me a couple of months, man. Give me some time and I'll show you that I'm, I know what I'm talking about. It took a week. You figured out, like, okay, he's not a real idiot. <laughs> I went and told him to get, some, get, the, get the cranberry juice. Get the seven up. Start drinking the cranberry juice. And she goes, well, that really works. I go, oh. <laughs> God's got so much wisdom and knowledge from us, for us, through us, that if we would just continue listening to each other, life is so much easier. We all have experience, wisdom, and knowledge of something that somebody else needs at some time. And when you're prepared to explain that joy in your heart, and that glitter in your eye, and that little skip in your step, all you gotta do is invite him. Come to the church. I can't explain it. Just come see you. Just come see you. Verse 10 says, This was something even the prophets wanted to know. You gotta understand that in the Old Testament, these guys that were prophets just spoke through, God spoke to them. They didn't know what they were saying, they didn't understand what they were saying. But they were speaking about Jesus, they were talking about the Messiah. All the Old Testament. Uh, 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 prophets that we talk about that we preach about that we Old Testament stuff all of it was just a, the voice of God would speak to them this is what it says about that it says this salvation was something even the prophets church when they prophesied about this they what time or the spirit of Christ was talking about when See, the Spirit's telling him what to do. And he's like, he's telling him about Jesus and the Messiah. He's like, well, what about me? I want to know about what this has to do with you. This has to do for the next generation. This is for us. This information is for us. This information is for them. They were prophesizing for the next generation of Israel. To remember the Messiah is coming. To remember Yeshua. And then we read how the, they do real good, they're right there with God, and then they go down, forget about God, back and forth, back and forth. Till the Messiah comes, here we go. Starting all over again. Instead of God saying Israel, he says, can He says, listen, he says, let him. Teaches us like that. Verse 11 says, they what time or situation the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about. They're wondering, what am I talking about? What is God talking about? But he told them in advance about Christ's suffering. Oh, I'm sorry. That he told them in advance about church and his, and his great glory. So when they were talking about what we read about the other day, about how they could barely understand, they could barely see, they could barely recognize who he was, that was talking about the Messiah. When they talk about the, the, the sacrifice that was hung on the tree, that is the Messiah. When they talk about the resurrection of the dead, that's the Messiah. They're talking about this and they're going, but what is the Messiah? Who is the Messiah? That's not for them to know. For them is to only speak it and get out of the way. What if you knew that, that, that something was going to happen, that there was going to be a great upheaval in our community, and that there was going to be a, a, a civil war in the United States, and we knew ahead of time that it would be between the Christians and the Muslims, and we knew that, and we had that, and we were ready for that, we would hold on to that, would we not? Or we would look at it as just an old story from the Bible that says, 
It'll never happen. Maybe it'll happen or not. But when you look at terrorists, and you look at the Old Testament, it's the same people. The same people that were persecuting the Jews then are the same people that are persecuting the whole world right now. This is the long factions that have taken their, their gospel, which it, 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 it's, it's got a lot of good stuff in it, but it's just not Jesus. And now that God tells us to be prepared, to prepare yourselves and, and, and to be right with God for the time of soon. Are we ready? Are we doing that? Are we ready for the sound of trumpets? For the return of Christ? Are we ready to have, have our world turned upside down? Are we ready? God says it's getting close. <laughs> Verse 12 says, they were told that their messages were not for themselves, but for you. And now this good news. was the good news. <laughs> Meaning what? What's the good news? You go to heaven now. Yay. No, you cannot. No. Hey, I got good news. You go back. Come on now. You can go to heaven now. You believe in Jesus? I do. Come on. That's pretty good news, isn't it? Amen. The word actually means gospel, actually means good news, and that's what the four gospels, the good news about Jesus Christ. Jesus is God. Died on the cross. King man died on the cross and walked out of the tomb for you. And all you gotta do is believe. And you're next in line. They were told that their messages were not for themselves, but for you. And now this good news has been by those who preach the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. It is all so wonderful that even the angels check this out. Even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen. They're watching from heaven. What's going on here on earth? Isn't that crazy? That the angels are anticipating and watching, like, man, look at these guys, they're waiting popcorn and chilling. Oh, boy. That's the end of a man. But you understand, church, what we just, what we just heard there, that, that the prophecies have been going on and they're out there for us now. That the, 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 the thing is, is now that you're, 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 you're with God in your life, you don't have to worry about regular things. You have the power of God. He's going to be with you, never leave or forsake you. But everything hinges on one thing. What is that? What is the church? It's Jesus, right? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Have you given your life to Christ? Because that's what I'm here to tell you. None of that matters. What we just talked about, it don't matter if you don't know Jesus. You can't have that unless... You have verbally said and spoken in front of God and everybody that Christ is your Messiah. If you have not done that, you got nothing. But I got something for you. This is where we truly say, if you want some, come get some. Are you scared? Weird when you point out that God is real. But the greatest thing is that He loves you. There's so much peace when you finally let go. So church, I ask you, please, don't waste any more time. Let God love you like he wants to love you. Let him show you his, his power and his love and his, his plans for you. Oh my goodness. If you're here and, and you just kind of want to do a re-up, man. If you're, 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 you're going to heaven and all, but you've been doing it your way, and you just want to get that old <coughs> spirit filled again. You want to just come and get some prayer, get some love, and come and get some. Come on. Yeah.
Who else wants to come on, man? Well, they broke the ice now. Get us up. It's a prayer. I'm just saying, we need a bunch of chickens. Come on, brother. Let me get some. All right. We can get some prayer. Yeah, right on time. Here we go. Oh, Lord, we love you. Thank you. 